Thank you for the invitation to join the meeting today. It's an honour and a pleasure to join Irish in Britain. Um, the consulate in Edinburgh is a little younger than Irish in Britain. We opened in 1998 um, and I've been here in Edinburgh as Consul General since the summer of 2019. I managed to get out and about and um, meet some of our community organisations here in Scotland for the first few months that I've been here and kept in touch online. I'm particularly uh, pleased to acknowledge the role that Irish and Britain played in our diaspora consultations last year as we worked on our joint bilateral review of Ireland's relationship with Scotland. Um, and one of the themes of that review and the, the work that we'll take forward together over the next number of years is about community and diaspora. One of the interesting elements of that is that it's not purely based on the diaspora, uh, the Irish diaspora in Scotland or the Scottish diaspora in Ireland, but looking at our shared diaspora around the world as well. And our embassies in Washington DC and Ottawa will work with Scottish government representations in the British embassies in those capitals to deliver events on our shared international diaspora um, later in the next year. Another theme of the review is culture um, and we have a commitment in our work together with Scotland um, to deliver uh, enriched cultural work uh, which is so strongly based in the community and the embassy in London along with Scotland House in London will hold annual events again celebrating what we share best together in terms of our cultural richness. Uh, in Scotland, the Irish community like to remind me of some of the historical and important firsts we have as part of the Irish in Britain. Um, we can go right back to Neolithic times, linking the Boyne Valley to Brodgar in Orkney, um, with the megalithic tombs in Maze Howe and Newgrange. And then since then, of course, Colum Killer, one of Ireland's patron saints, uh, who was born 1500 years ago this year, came to Iona in Scotland. And since then, Scotland JA, one of the largest diaspora organisations here, have existed for 125 years next year, and we look forward to celebrating that great anniversary with them. These are our historical community and diaspora links, and more in a more contemporary context, I've been glad to introduce the celebration of St Bridget's Day in Scotland, and look forward to taking that further, particularly in connection with my colleagues in the consulates in Cardiff and Manchester. And of course, we're always keen to see greater involvement from our community organisations in Scotland with Irish in Britain, and we'll continue to promote the great work that you do to our community organisations and our broader diaspora here. Thank you, Jane, um, and, and welcome to the meeting. Um, we now move to another devolved nation, uh, as we welcome Consul General Denise Hanahan, who is joining us from the consulate in Cardiff. Welcome, Jane. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. Mm. Great. Well, first of all, thanks so much for this, this invitation. It's, it's really such a great pleasure to be among um, good Irish friends uh, and, and community this afternoon. Um, I also moved to, uh, to Wales in 2019 to reopen the Irish consulate here. We, some of you will recall that there was one initially at the period of devolution. We had to, we had to uh, pause for a while, but we're back now with full energy and full flow, working really closely with, with Jane in Edinburgh, with Sarah in Manchester, and above all with the embassy and the state agencies in London. Um, I was going to say, well, Wales and Ireland have such deep historic connections going back to St. Patrick being a Welshman, but Jane has obviously trumped me there with her Neolithic connections with the Boyne Valley. But it is, remains true to say that we like to say that the Irish Sea joins Ireland and Wales rather than, than dividing us so many close connections between, per, for example, Hollyhead and Dublin. Many Irish people have spent time in, in North Wales and then in South Wales with the direct connections into Rosslair and a number of direct flights in and out of Cardiff Airport as well. Really closely connected at a community level. There have been waves of um, immigration from Ireland over the centuries, up to and including, you know, today and young students who are arriving into uh, the Welsh universities. And there is really great energy in that community their GAA uh, groups are flourishing what we don't have in Wales and it'll be one of the um, the ambitions within the consulate is a, is a deeper sense of the Irish community throughout Wales and we're hoping to work with Irish in Britain on that in that unlike let's say the north of England or Scotland there aren't currently established Irish community 
organizations are centers. I think in previous generations, we would have seen that, but, but at the moment, um, not. But I'm very pleased to say that we have, since our arrival, managed to double the number of organizations receiving Irish Immigrant Support Programme funding. So that's a, that's a win. Um, we're working very closely with the Welsh government, who are very pleased to, to have us here. Most of you will be aware of the devolved nature of health, education, transport. So there's a lot of things to work on there. We've published a shared statement, which was jointly launched by Minister Coveney uh, and the First Minister of Wales earlier this year. And that focuses on a range of areas, including trade and tourism, uh, culture, language, obviously with the, with the bilingualism, heritage, community, sport, and in particular a focus on how can we collaborate in terms of climate action, sustainability, and a, a real focus in the work flowing from that statement on the energy potential uh, in the Irish Sea and in the Celtic Sea. Uh, in terms of learning between the two countries, we're delighted to say that Ireland is going to host next year a Welsh official to do a secondment, learning actually about diaspora policy and how we engage with our Irish communities overseas. And we're keen to learn from them around their commitment to future generations and long-term sustainability. So I could happily talk for all afternoon. I know you've lots more people to hear from, but just to say we're delighted that we now have our consulate building open here in Cardiff Bay. We have created some uh, online community events, pop-up quizzes and so on. So we've been able to meet some of the community. And now that restrictions are easing, we hope to be out and about and engage lots more. So don't hesitate to get in touch. And thanks again for the invitation. Thank you, Denise. You're very welcome. Uh, so finally, uh, we're joined by one of our newest additions to the consular team. Uh, we move up to Manchester and we have Sarah Mangan, Consul General for the North of England. You're very welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Patrick. And uh, thanks to Brian and Irish in Britain uh, for the invitation and the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, as you said, Patrick, we are very new. Uh, so I took the, up the post as the first Consul General of Ireland for the North of England on the 1st of July. And we had our official opening by uh, Foreign Minister Simon Coveney on the 1st of October. And I'm joined here in Manchester by a Vice Consul, Karina O'Brien, and we have two local recruits, Dean and Catherine. So the context, I thought it would be helpful to know, to explain why, why we're here. Um, so the context for establishing the consulate, it's part of the Irish government's Global Ireland strategy, which aims to double Ireland's international impact and footprint by 2025. And the consulate in Manchester is actually the 12th new mission to open in the last three years. And there are a number more planned uh, with funding confirmed. Um, the... A key part of the Global Irish strategy in general is to maintain uh, the deep and strong relationship with our nearest neighbour, uh, the United Kingdom, and its constituent parts. And the consulate, though we're based here in Manchester, is for the north of England. Um, our consular area is the northwest, the northeast, and Yorkshire and the Humber. So basically, from Liverpool to Sheffield to Hull and everything north to the Scottish border is the area that we're responsible for. So this is a region which is home to at least 137,000 people who were born on the island of Ireland. Uh, we know of 29 Irish community organisations that receive funding through the Immigrant Support Programme. And of course, there are dozens of Irish heritage and cultural bodies and very large numbers of Irish people with, uh, or sorry, people with Irish heritage here in the north of England. So our plan, I mean, we're only just starting out, but our plan, of course, is to build on the reputation of generations of Irish people. Um, that they have earned for Ireland in the north of England and supporting the Irish community here is central to our mandate as well. Uh, we're only recently here, of course, so but it is our intention to get out and visit as many organisations and community groups as we can. And in the few weeks um, and months that we have been open, we have made a start. Um, we've been in, uh, obviously, we've met a number of groups here in Manchester. We've been in Liverpool. We've been in Leeds. Um, my colleague Karina has been up in Huddersfield and we have plans to get to the main uh, population centres across the north of England in the next few weeks and months. So I'm very much looking forward to getting on the road and getting to know this part of the world and the Irish community uh, much better. We also have a role in strengthening Ireland's political relationships here. Um, and this we bring, bring, I suppose, a new northern dimension to our um, engagement um, by kind of upgrading our partnerships with the very dynamic uh, regional and local governments in this part of the world. Um, 
I suppose just to say that opening the consulate in the north of England is really a long term investment. I mean, we plan to be around for quite a while. Uh, and it's really a demonstration of Ireland's commitment to our relationship with Britain, um, even as the implementation of Brexit continues to present challenges. Um, here in Manchester, we're working with Enterprise Ireland, who opened their office here in 2019. Um, and part of our remit, of course, is also to support uh, intensified Irish commercial engagement in this part of the world, uh, which the region um, has over apparently over one million businesses, so plenty of opportunities. Um, I just want to mention as well that, uh, sadly, unlike Denise, we're not in permanent offices yet. We're still operating out of temporary offices, uh, so we don't have a public office at this stage. But the plan is uh, that we will co-locate co with Enterprise Ireland in a new pur purpose-designed um, office building uh, that will be known as Ireland House. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming the Irish community into Ireland House in years to come. Uh, our hope is that we'll be in our new offices within the next 12 months, but uh, that all depends on uh, procurement processes and the rest of the, the rest of it. But we have begun the search. Um, so, yeah, we're looking forward to that. In the meantime, as I say, unfortunately, we can't welcome you in at the moment. So instead, we're just trying to get out and meet as many people as we can. Uh, but of course, there are so many wonderful facilities and wonderful Irish centres across the north of England that were spoiled for choice in terms of uh, places to go and uh, meet, meeting places. But again, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak to you today. We look forward to meeting many in the Irish community um, over the next few weeks and months. And if you haven't had contact from us, I would appeal to you, please do get in touch with the embassy and you can find our contact details on, the, uh, on our website. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sarah.